So, and a quick thing, I'll go, go over this brain journey development, see what it looks like. So, so here's the, um, the primary uh, brain uh, sections. We have the, uh, we start off with what's called the prosence, prosencephalon and the mesencephalon. And then there's another part called the rhombencephalon, which is down here. So you can't see the whole word. So that's the rhombencephalon down here. So, and the mesencephalon is here and the prosencephalon is this part up here. So you have three major divisions uh, at three weeks of brain development. This is the anterior end of the uh, neural tube is what it's called at three weeks. So the prosencephalon is the forebrain, the mesencephalon becomes the midbrain, and the hindbrain is the rhombencephalon. So that uh, rhombencephalon becomes the cerebellum, pons, and medulla oblongata. The mesencephalon becomes the mesencephalon or the midbrain, and the prosencephalon becomes the diencephalon, oops, becomes the, the prosencephalon becomes the telencephalon and the diencephalon. So a telencephalon is the cerebrum. The diencephalon is the diencephalon. We still call it that. Mesencephalon, uh, usually we refer to that as the midbrain. Um, and then we have the uh, metencephalon, which is cerebellum and pons and medulla oblongata. So, so there's all your, where all your regions of your brain come from. All right, next slide. So, and just another... Be a front. This would be a frontal section of it, showing how, how the, the forebrain, the prosencephalon, which becomes the telencephalon, which becomes the cerebrum, bulges out. So it's, it's not just a fold over, but it's also a bulging out of the brain as well. And the diencephalon also bulges out a little bit, <clears throat> so where the thalami are, and then the, the midbrain, then the, then the hindbrain, the metencephalon, and the uh, medulla oblongata, and all that. So, and the spinal cord down below that. Okay, next slide. So here's uh, what, it, what you actually look like at different weeks. So a three-week embryo is up here in A. And so we have this kind of like, um, I don't know, sperm-looking, uh, you know, kind of figure up there. So you have uh, optic vesicle. You have a prosencephalon, which is going to be the brain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. So you have those, those three pieces there. And then we have uh, at uh, four weeks, a little bit of definition, you start having uh, some of these, some of the uh, cranial nerves start forming. And then at uh, five weeks in C, you have, uh, you can see the cranial nerves start extending as well as, uh, the, you know, the brain starts folding over and uh, starts making this, this folding over kind of, uh, kind of figure. And then at seven weeks, there's even more folding over and the nerves are extending, things are developing. And then... At 11 weeks, uh, there's a little face, and there's a um, there's a, a brain that doesn't doesn't have any gyri, doesn't have any gyri or, or sulci really to speak of, although it looks like you have a lateral fissure uh, starting to form there. And then you have the superior colliculus is there, and the cerebellum is starting to form. And then you have a whole bunch, and here's your uh, your uh, pons and medulla oblongata, and you have uh, cranial nerves five uh, five seven nine. Uh, 10 and 12 are showing up there. So next slide. Then we go to four months. And so you start having a, a lateral cerebral fissure is showing up there. And then at six months, you start having some, uh, some beginnings of some gyri in there as those, as those neurons start dividing more and more and more. You start having, they start bulging out and start making these, uh, these, these areas where you have these uh, this gyri and the sulci. And cerebellum develops more olfactory uh, bulbs are developing, so you, you start uh, getting uh, the nerve for the for the eyes, so for the nose, and um, then you have the central sulcus uh, starts developing at about uh, eight about eight months, and at nine months you can actually see a whole bunch of uh, gyri, uh, nine months newborn uh, gyri and sulci. You have your uh, lateral fissure there, um, and so you have, you have a, uh, a brain that's uh, still developing. But it's uh, it's a lot farther along than it was uh, nine months earlier. So anyway, just thought you'd be you'd enjoy seeing what it looks like during during brain development. Okay, next slide. And um, here's uh, some sagittal sections of the same thing. So this just shows that three months, and then four months is B, and then uh, uh, eight months, and then a newborn. And you can see development of smooth brain into uh, into the uh, having gyri and. Uh, you see the corpus callosum and all those kind of things develop. So here's your corpus callosum here. Corpus callosum. 
and you can see it here. So that's what that whole arch is. And then when you go back to four months, it's really hard to pick it out uh, there, but there's a little bit of it there. So you can see that little bit of it. Chorded plexus um, is here. And so that's what this, uh, that's what these pe this piece is here. So showing those those pieces as they as they start developing. And uh, cerebellum, you can see how small it is at uh, four months here versus eight months versus newborn. So and all those kind of things. And the uh, thalamus, and you have the intermediate mass of the thalamus right there. So you see how it is. And you got a pituitary gland is is ready to go. And you got a pineal gland back here also as well. So so all those things are, you know, so in the newborn infant, you know, all those things are pretty much ready to go. There, uh, There's more development, more uh, gyri that need the more neurons that need to need to divide and develop, but uh, but everything's everything's getting there. So anyway, next slide. So a couple of uh, articles you can look up and see under understanding uh, brain damage location. And also there's a website called Brain Made Simple, which is actually Got some pretty good stuff on it. Okay, next slide. Okay, we're gonna go through the sheep brain dissection as the last thing. It's a um, uh, it's what we would do in, in class. We would do a sheep brain dissection and a spinal cord dissection. So I'm gonna show you the pictures of what that looks like, and we'll describe what it looks like in real life. So, oh, forgot I forgot about Phineas Gage, the curious case of Phineas Gage. Okay, this guy this, this is a story. You got you got to hear about the story if you're learning about the brain. So. He was 25 years old. He was working for the railroad and they were blowing up rock. And so what you did when you blew up rock back in those days in 1848 in Cavendish, Vermont, um, you put a little, some powder in a, a little paper package and you pushed it, you drilled a hole and you pushed it down in the hole and you had a fuse on it and you would tamp it down with what's called a tamping iron. And that's what he's holding in this, pi this picture here. It's 13 pounds, and so you tamp it down. Well, problem is, if you've ever worked with rock and a piece of steel or a piece of iron, you bang things, a piece of metal against a rock, and sometimes you get sparks. Well, that's what happened. A little spark went, and it blew that tamping iron right up through through here, and sorry, through the left side, through here, and went up through and exited up through and went through his frontal lobe and then exited through the frontal bone and then landed uh, like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 feet away, something like that. So, I mean, it was a heck of an explosion. It drove it right up through his head and landed, landed over uh, a long way away. Anyway, he, before this accident, he was like the nicest guy. Everybody liked him. He was great. And after it was over, he was, uh, he was assessed by a um, physician and he said he's now... Uh, he gets mad all the time. He's irreverent. He's uh, he has, uh, he's very profane. He has used a lot of profanity, which was not previously his custom. It was what, what John Martin Harlow wrote. So the personality change lasted for a couple of years. And then he went to, uh, he left uh, the United States, went down to Chile and became a stagecoach driver down there. And then he, uh, um, he moved back. Um, I think he was living with his mom. But he was, uh, and he died about 12 years later from an epileptic seizure, which was probably due, which almost totally due to the to uh, the injury. So, anyway, his skull and the tamping iron that passed through it are on display at a museum in Boston, Massachusetts, called the Warren Anatomical Museum. So you can see over here on the left, this is where the where the tamping iron went through, right there, and there's the hole. In his skull, that's that's where it went through, right there. So it went, you can see it went through the left frontal lobe of, of his brain. So, which uh, there's a lot of personality in that um, in in that. And on the right side is actually there's a model here, and you can see this hole right here. So that's that piece of skull um, is, is that piece of skull that hole right there where the, where the tamping iron went through, right right about here. So anyway. So um, let's see. And this was one of the first, um, or was the case that that uh, people started to realize, oh, there's parts of the brain that are responsible for personality. And so this this really uh, drove forward the idea that uh, that certain parts of the, of the brain control personality. So anyway, so if you've hung on this long through through the through the lecture, you now know about the curious case of Phineas Gage. So and you'll hopefully you'll never remember that, you'll never forget that one. So all right, next slide. So here's a sheep brain dorsal view looking down from the top. So 
You have your left cerebral hemisphere and your right cerebral hemisphere. Here's your frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe in, in the sheep is not that developed, okay? It's not that big. Um, we, because here's your parietal lobe here, and there's gonna be a, a le that's the left one, there's a right one, obviously on the, on the right side. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't have the uh, the capacity or the need, I guess, to reason and uh, and do a lot of, uh, of higher level uh, organizing of their world like we do. So anyway, you can see uh, some examples, sulci and gyri. It's fun to do in lab because you can actually slow, gently peel off the pia mater, which you can kind of see it. It's, uh, oops, it's kind of shiny. It's this shiny surface that's there. That's the pia mater that's overlaying that, and you can see it actually goes down the grooves. So you peel it off, and you actually pull these grooves apart, and they're like, it, it actually goes very deep in there. So here's your longitudinal fissure going all the way down the middle there. Uh, occipital lobe is back in, back in the back. Uh, cerebell, cere cerebellar hemispheres, uh, you got them here and here. And this is the vermis down the middle here of the cerebellum. And they have a medulla oblongata underneath, down there, and then you have spinal cord starting off here. So there's your dorsal view of the brain, just to get you oriented. And one thing that the sheep do have, and you can see a little tiny piece of it right here, is right there. Oops, that's a little, little too, um, it's a little over eager with that. So right there, that's a little piece of the what's called the olfactory uh, bulb. It's a uh, it's the olfactory nerve uh, comes forward. It's a wide tract of fibers. And it ends there, and there's little fibers that stick down into the into the nose. And so, dogs and sheep and lots of other lots of animals have have very large olfactory bulbs that because uh, they they use a sense of smell a lot. And that's uh, olfactory olfactory nerve is also cranial nerve number one. So, so you now you now learned one cranial nerve, and the optic nerve, the, so the eyes is number two. So now you know. Now you know two of them. Olfactory is number one. Optic is number two. Next slide. Okay, so uh, now we're looking at the underside or a ventral view of the sheep brain. And so you can see the olfactory bulb. So here's the olfactory bulb. And we have olfactory tract. So that's the nerve fibers going back. We have an olfactory bulb here on this side and the nerve fiber tract going back that way as well. The, and the olfactory bulb, remember, is sitting in the roof of the, of the nasal passage, and you have these little fibers sticking down in there. And the, at the end, at the end of those little fibers, they have um, the, the sensory receptors for smell. So those uh, you have sensation of smell, and it goes travels back up those uh, travel back up those those, those fibers um, into the olfactory bulb, and then back uh, the olfactory tract back into the brain. And then you have uh, you also have the optic nerve and the optic chiasm and the optic tract. So here's the optic nerve that's going out to there and there, going out to the uh, the eyeballs, and you have the optic tract back here. And so you notice this makes kind of an X shape, X shape. So you have um, the optic tract is the nerve fibers going back to the uh, occipital lobe, and you have these you have some fibers go to left and right, and some fibers cross over and go, uh, some from the right side go to the left side. So you have different different things happen in the optic tracks, and this would be the whole, this would be the, showing the outside of it. There, and there, and there. So that's showing, uh, so the black is the fibers, and the outside of it is just the, the covering over, the, uh, over, all, over all those fibers. So would, and it's an X-shaped, and so it's a chiasm. So these things come together into this chiasm and then split back out again. So then you also have the infundibulum down here. Pituitary gland is gone. Usually that's gone when you pull the brains out. The, the pituitary gland uh, is in, in there and it gets just pops off that infundibulum, which is a real small piece. You have a mammillary body. So you have uh, right down there. A little, it's actually a kind of a pair of those. And then you have cerebral peduncles here and here. So there's your large fiber, white uh, white fiber tracks going up into the brain. Then you have um, the pons, this area here. And then we have the, um, the medulla oblongata is this guy here. 
And then we have the spinal cord starting down here. So there would be your occipital bone and the foramen magnum would be that would be about right there. So would be uh, would be approximately that that uh, that position there. Um, also notice there's a nerve coming off here, off the side of the pond. It's called the trigeminal nerve. So that's nerve number five. And then there's another nerve. The uh, that's this uh, kind of shaded area right here and here. It's called the abducens nerve. That's nerve number four. So now you know uh, one, two, four, and five. Uh, one olfactory, two optic, four. I'm sorry, six. <laughs> I was like, that's not that's not four. <laughs> one, two, five, and si one, two, five, and six. So trigeminal is five, and abducens is six. So anyway, uh, next slide. So here's a posterior view of the midbrain. Sorry, it's I'm getting tired. Uh, posterior view of the midbrain structures of the sh uh, sheep brain. So we have occipital lobe. So that's the back part here. And this little bit sticking down here is the pineal, gl pineal gland or pineal body. Um, then we have the superior and inferior colliculi. So here's a superior colliculus here, and here's a superior colliculus here, and here's an inferior colliculus here, and an inferior colliculus here. And so there's little, little, little uh, hill, hill, hills, little bumps. So, and here's your cerebellum. So here's the firmus in the middle. And here's the cerebellar hemisphere, left one and a right one here. So there you go. All right, next slide. But this is a good, uh, sorry, this slide is a good way you can put, you can do this. And so this, this large gap that you see here, it's, it, I mean, you, you take it and you pull it down so you can see the in superior and inferior colliculi in that, in that gap. But, but that, that whole gap there um, that you're, that you're seeing, that's the, the, um, that's the transverse fissure, so transverse going across. So that's the transverse fissure between the cerebellum and the cerebrum. Okay, next slide. Here's a mid-sagittal section of the sheep brain. So you can see it has a, uh, you have a corpus callosum. You have a fornix. So here's a corpus callosum here, going all the way around. Fornix going here. You have a lateral ventricle, the space right there, okay. Uh, pineal body, pineal gland is back here in the back. Here's the cerebrum. A transverse fissure, we talked about that in a second. That's this gap here. The corpora quadrigemina, that's the superior and inferior colliculus. So it's in here. And then we have the cerebellum. We have a fourth ventricle here. And there's the lateral ventricle was up here, up here. And then uh, let's see. They have the optic chiasm, chiasm here and the pituitary gland on this one, you still have a two, pituitary gland hanging down here and then a mammillary body here. And here's the pons and here's the medulla oblongata here. And then here's the spinal cord coming off the back. So, and you notice that the, the brain is like forward and the spinal cord is coming straight off the back like that. It's cause this is a four legged animal. So the brain is like this and the spinal cord comes straight back parallel, uh, roughly uh, in line with the brain rather than, rather than us, where our head is up like this and the spinal cord comes down. So next slide. So here's a drawing as well as a, a diagram, as well as a, uh, an actual uh, sheep brain. So we have the cerebrum here. So you can see cerebrum. And we have the corpus callosum. Here you can see it, corpus callosum there. And then of course, corpus callosum here. We have the uh, hypothalamus, he is this down here, and we have the pituitary gland st sticking down here. So that's where it shows up here, pituitary gland. Mammillary body is this hump right here. So mammillary body isn't really, yeah, it's right here. So you can see it there. And then we have the midbrain. So we have the corpora quadrigemina, superior inferior colliculus, and we have spinal cord medulla oblongata and pons cerebellum. And uh, so there you go. All right, next slide. And just like that, we are done with the brain. So next time we're gonna go on to the spinal cord. And after that, we'll do the cranial nerves and uh, let's see, spinal nerves. And then after that, we'll do the integumentary and system and the endocrine system. So just a few weeks, a uh, couple weeks left of the class. So. Hope you guys have a good week and I will see you next time. Bye.